Chicago drill music has always had its violent undertones simply by telling the truth about life in the streets of Chicago. This shit been going on since the 20s, man. From the organized crime days of Capone to now, just the game making. See, that's the way it always is, that's the way it's always gonna be. One of the biggest names in Chicago at the moment is the late, great King Vaughn. Now, Vaughn has been known to diss his ops in most of his tracks, and he's a known shooter whether he was convicted or not. In this video, we're going to be discussing the beef between King Vaughn and K.I. and how Vaughn may have allegedly killed K.I. Before we start the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you would like to join this month's giveaway of one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck! The Chicago drill scene has been booming since the early 2010s with artists like Chief Keef and Lil Durk putting others onto the game. King Vaughn is one of Chicago's most popular artists at the moment, even though he passed away in November of 2020. King Vaughn was born Devon Bennett on April 9, 1994. He was born and raised in Chicago and was known to be a problem in the eyes of law enforcement. Me growing up when I got in trouble early, 15 years old, shit like that, so I ain't never been grown until like right now because I've been in jail. Following a three-year stint in jail while waiting on a trial, he was released with all charges dropped and his hip-hop career took off. Before his hits began to roll out, it's no secret that Vaughn was a shooter and known affiliate of the Black Disciples. On July of 2014, King Vaughn was arrested in connection to a shooting from May of that same year. He was facing three charges. One charge was the murder of Malcolm Stuckey during a shooting in Inglewood, Chicago, and two counts of attempted murder. After witnesses failed to appear and testify, all the charges were dropped and Vaughn was released three years later in 2017. I got charged with it um, when I was 19, 2014, when I was 19 years old. They let me out when I was like, what, 23. It wasn't long before his music career took off. After being released, King Von signed with Lil Durk's label OTF and began making banger after banger. From the hit track Crazy Story to songs like Why He Told, Vaughn is constantly getting millions of streams on various services. But Vaughn has always been public with the fact that even though he was a rising star, he would still hold his own in the streets. King Vaughn has been known to diss and tell stories about previous hits and licks that he's done through his lyrics. We often hear him referencing the death of Gakira Barnes, otherwise known as K.I. K.I., also known as Lil Snoop, was born as Gakira Barnes, grew up in what is considered M.O.B. territory. She lost her father on her first Easter in 1997, and some say this led to her wanting to protect those close to her. When she grew up, Gakira moved to Jaro City, which is a set in Chicago that was named after Jarvis. It's essentially a gang location around 62nd and Vernon in Chicago. As she grew up, she became close with people that had some affiliations with a few MOB members. She began to hang out with people like Makado, who was from the 600. Makado is also someone who Gakira had a relationship with, as well as other affiliates of the Gangster Disciples. After a while, K.I. became close with Tuka. This was all while she was still before she had started living a life of violence. She had been known to brawl but hadn't messed around with guns yet. This all changed after Tuka was shot and killed at a bus stop. Following the death of her friend, K.I. became interested in drilling and smoking knobs. It was actually Tuka's brother Seaball who taught her how to approach her targets and to be ready when the time comes. It was on Tuka's birthday that Gakira and her friend and known shooter, FBG Butta, saw Odie riding his bike and chose to shoot him. As you may know, Odie is the person that Oblock was named after shortly following his death. It wasn't long after this that K.I. became a problem for anyone that crossed her the wrong way, especially the Yops. A lot of this violence led to K.I. getting jumped by multiple members of the 800 set. This didn't seem to phase her though, seeing how the next day she went to their block and opened fire on several of their members. K.I. quickly became notorious and had been referred to as the most notorious female in U.S. gang history. She has even been credited with training other young shooters to run the game just like she was taught by C-Ball. No one knows how many bodies she has exactly, but some say the number might be higher than her age when she passed, which was 17. He had this reputation of allegedly shooting or killing up to 17 people by the time she was 17 years old. And so on April 11, 2014, Gakira Barnes was walking on the streets of Chicago to a friend's house to have lunch when she was gunned down by a hooded male in broad daylight. Some group drove up. 
unloaded in a drive-by shooting. She got hit, fell to the ground. No. K.I. was one of 46 people that had been shot in Chicago during that same weekend. I guess that's why the city has a nickname as brutal as Chirac. Barnes was walking down the 6400 block of South Ebert Avenue near the infamous O Block when she was hit. Reports say that she was shot and collapsed onto a set of wooden stairs near where she had been walking. K.I. was hit nine times in the neck, chest, and jaw. After the shooter fled the scene, a nearby neighbor attempted to stop the bleeding using a combination of pressure and a towel, but there was no luck there. Gakira Barnes, aka K.I., was pronounced dead at the scene. No one has been arrested in connection to the crime. However, the murder had many turning to social media to share their opinions. Many of K.I.'s friends and affiliates paid their respects to their fallen friend, but many of them also vowed to vengeance on their ops, letting them know that they're coming. Some of the members of the Black Disciples also took to social media as well as hip-hop songs to drop Gakira's name in a less than respectful manner. In an A&E documentary called Secret Life of a Gang Girl, The Untold Story, the world was privy to the story of Gakira Barnes and the life she lived as a teenage female gang assassin. There is a point in the documentary where we get an interview with King Von. In the interview, we learn that even though they were on opposite sides, K.I. being a G.D. and Von being a B.D., King Von was still in her DMs. Apparently, Von was in there with some raw text too. He was saying things like he was gonna have her. In the interview, we even hear Von mentioning that he was trying to smash and that he thought Gakira was cool as hell. Could this have all been a front though? If he was trying to get with K.I., why would he release tracks about her getting shot? I mean, I know she was in the rival set and it's common in hip-hop to diss the dead ops, but why would you diss someone you were trying to get with and when you can diss countless other ops that met the same fate that she did? Some people think that King Von's attraction to K.I. was only a ploy or an alibi if he ever needed one. Now, what's interesting is just a little while ago, Chicago PD officially named King Von as the killer of Gakira Barnes aka K.I. In newly shared documents, the public learned of witnesses that reportedly named Vaughn in the murder. The description of the incident reported is, an unknown male wearing a gray hoodie and blue jeans approached the victims. The unknown offender then produced a handgun and began firing in the direction of the victims, striking all three. The unknown offender then was observed entering an unknown vehicle, making good his escape. Following the reveal of this document, the police then stated that an investigation had revealed that the crime was committed by Davon Bennett, referring to King Vaughn by his government name. This was apparently discovered a while ago, but the police lacked the evidence to tie King Vaughn to the murder, so they ended up not filing any charges against him, as it would have been a waste of time. After this was announced, people flocked to social media to share their opinions on the situation. Many of them referring to the interview that Vaughn provided to A&E for the documentary on K.I. We are seeing some support for K.I. as well as some fans saying that this is all said and done and to let the two rest in peace. What do you think? Should King Vaughn's involvement in the Gakira Barnes case be looked into further? Or should we just let the man rest easy and call it a day? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Hey you. Yeah you. You like the video? Great. We got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like. And all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees. But you have to click on fast because this message will self-destruct in 5 seconds.